Hi, welcome to the channel if you're new here. Welcome back if you've been here before. This is the Quantock Hills and you'd be forgiven for not knowing or have heard, hearing of this place. It's a small area of natural beauty that sits between the Mendip Hills and Exmoor. And to be honest, I've been wanting to get down here for quite some time because it's got huge potential, not just because of its location close to Exmoor, but also because of the mass amount of things around here to explore. There's great looking hikes with views all around. There's beaches, cliff tops, and there's even a waterfall on a beach to check out. On top of that, there's a couple of free decent looking car camping spots that I want to scope out today. So first things first, I'm going to get a coffee because I've only had one. Get the crib sorted out and then we can go check this area out. Check this little spot out I'm at though. There's all like bays for parking here and such. It's just off the A road and it's called Woodland Hill. It's perfect for overnighting. No signs to stop you doing so. There is, however, no phone signal, but was a real little gem of a find last night. And amazingly, it's not on part for night, which was a real shock to the system, to be honest, having found it, but a good one. Right, next stop on the beach. Oh, look at this little village. I'll say the backside of the village. Thatched houses on the roof. This is what this whole area is full of. Beautiful sort of coastal road and then just spits of villages all the way along. Real nice. Right, here we go then. Coming into the village of Kelv, apparently. K-E-L-V-E -E or something. The thing is, I'm hoping I can park in the village here. And it looks like I can. Oh, this could be good. From a distance, oh yes, legend. Kilv, Kelv, I think it's Kilv. Anyway, see the thing is, there's supposed to be parking down near the beach here, but it's one of them infamous parking zones where your registration plate gets zapped by cameras as you go through the turnstile or whatever you call it. There's rumors of people being overcharged, people being ticketed, the machine not working properly and just, ultimate amounts of chaos going on in the car park so i just didn't want to play your ball and this way gives us like an hour to stretch your legs it's only a mile so should be there and back in an hour and a half max and we get a chance to have a little bumble through the village of kelv keeve whatever you want to call it tomato tomato and in all honesty it looks like a tidy little village i mean look out the backdrop You've got a beach down the way, and this whole area, even though you've got Minehead down the way, it's a relatively quiet sort of area. The further west you go along this coastline, until you get to sort of Ilfracombe and such, yeah, it's just raw countryside, it's beautiful. And to be fair, with all the hype surrounding the area, I'm expecting the beach to be uh, something special. Let's hope so. Bungalows. It's madness because you think like 40, 50 years ago, all these houses, no one would have really wanted them or it just would have been a real tight knit little community. Not much known about it out there in the way, sort of dead difficult to get down to 40, 50 years ago. And now it's just like a forer through thousands of cars all the time. And I don't know, changes, doesn't it? But oh, well, this is quite funny. Here we go. This is the infamous car park and it looks like its reputation precedes itself because there's not a single person parking there. That says a lot, doesn't it? And there is a couple of cars parked up the way and then that car park in the village is full. It looks like most people are parking there and walking through. <laughs> it's private land. It looks like somebody set it up to make a quick buck and people have got miffed with it. <laughs> I'm sure it's busy on a busy day, but yeah, not today. Mm. Good news though, I think the beach is only about five minutes down the way and the sun's coming out. I can't believe it. It's been drizzly and rainy all day. I think we've hit this one at the perfect timing. Fingers crossed. Oof, might even have a dip in the water. 
not. All right, here we go then. It looks like we're in a little bit of the English coastal path. Apparently, there's two ways we can go here. We can cut up here and apparently there's a bit of a cliff top and a bit of off-beating track down to the beach or I could have gone the other way. It's supposed to be a bit of a better trail, but I just figured I'd check this area out first. I think it's only five minutes each way. English coastal path as well. All around England, you know. Oh, sneaky little bench for a bit of chill vestering. That only means one thing. Should be a tidy view over here. We hope to right. The grin's creeping from here to here already. Oh my days. Oh yes. Oh wow, look at this from that coastline. So sight. Little bit windy. Do apologise. It's not Sandy Beach. I mean it is out of the way. It looks nice. Ish. Just cut them out looks pages though, doesn't it? The colours of the way. This is the beauty of this coastline. It's just like this the whole way down. Beautiful like I guess it's farmland, spits the countryside, and it just comes down to the beach all the way along, all the way down to Ilford. Yeah, to the edge of Devon. A real picture postcard spot that, I don't know, I just get that feeling that it's not overly visited. I mean, there are spots along here that are, but even the last time I was here, I didn't feel like it was overly busy. I gotta say, it feels really nice to be here. I was gonna be heading south towards Portland and such, and I gotta be honest, I'm glad I spun around and headed up this way. Admittedly, with a 300 mile stop off on the way to Leicester and back to pick up a cable for my power unit, because it was, if you're a regular to the series, the XT60 cable that broke. Absolute nightmare, but it's all sorted now, and we're back on the road. Talking of getting back on the road, I think I'm going to head up the coastline from here, and I'm going to see if we can find this waterfall on a beach. Hopefully, the weather will hold out, and we can have a few little sneaky drone shots. I'll catch you nearer there on the flip side. Ah, well, here's a spot along the old A39 on the way to the waterfall then. This was my option for a car camping spot for the night. And I've got to be honest, looking at it now, yeah, it's definitely nothing special. It's got a phone signal, which is more than that other one last night had, but yeah, I think I'd probably prefer to stay down there. This road does get busy, or rather is busy all night long. There's cars going around it and they just echo around here. So if you was parked here, it'd probably get a little bit annoying. Even where I was, it was pretty loud, but yeah, there's better car camping spots or overnighting spots to be had around this area. Hopefully later we'll find a few of them, but for now, I've got to try and find this waterfall. It doesn't bode well. The roads look sketchy and I'm not sure about parking. Let's go have a look. Yep, yeah, this ain't good. Uh, I'm going down a private road to some holiday camp place at summer at the minute. This is random as both. Oh man, Arr. not what I wanted. Let's see what happens down here. I might be able to pay for parking, I don't know. Well, good news and bad news. Good news is you can park down here apparently. Bad news is I've bloody pay four quid. Oh mate, I'm only going to be here about 20 minutes. This sucks. I hate things like that. I might be able to wangle it. Let's see what happens. I doubt it. Well, I've got to say it. What a beautiful little site. Check this out. All caravan statics around. A little shop over the way. Office round the corner. And it's just nice. Greenery all around. Feet and such. It's beautiful. Don't be good paying for parking around here. She's done me a deal and paid for three quid, I think it was. <sighs> nice people. Great little lady in the shop, and here's a bonus. I asked if I could leave the car here overnight and do a wild camp. Didn't mention the wild camp, just said to leave the car here and me not be in it. She was a little bit like that, but she said it'd be okay. For now, it's the waterfall. Apparently, it's just a little path down the way, and it should be pretty funky with all the rain that we've had recently, so fingers crossed. Oh, mate, check it out. These are the static caravans you'd want to stay in. Look at that, it's got a sea view over the beach. Oh man, reminds me of Koh Samui, Thailand. I mean, it's blue skies, it's coming and clearing, so not quite as warm, but yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie, it's not pure white sand beach, but it's looking pretty tidy. I think what we're looking for is over there. 
unfortunate there. <laughs> I've got miles downhill to go. This looks steep and long. It's going to be a pain in the arse coming back up. <sighs> Damn, that's a long way down. I'll tell you what else. It's bloody windy as boat. And bloody tides coming in, apparently. Yeah, if I go over, I might not be able to get back. You better be quick. Oh, shit. Nearly went. Damn it. <sighs> well, freaking A. I'm glad to just ask these peaks where this bloody waterfall is. I thought it was right over there, Miles. Apparently not. Apparently it's around the corner this way. Oh, I'm seeing a bit of gushing. Oh, we love a gusher, baby. Let's go. Sad, yeah, man. Waterfall on the beach. I mean, come on. Who don't freaking hate love a waterfall on the beach? Sad, man. Yeah, man. This is going to be stunning. Well, I can't deny, not exactly the drone flight I wanted. It's never a nice feeling when you get the drone in the air and you see warnings on the screen saying, high winds, unable to fly back. It's, uh, yeah, a little bit disconcerting, but it takes nothing away from being at this spot. This was the whole point of coming to the Quantock Hills. You come and check out this waterfall on the beach. It's been raining for the past two days, and there's a land in the spot. It's blue skies and blazing. I couldn't ask for more. It's absolutely lustastic. For now though, I think we need to start thinking about where we're going to stay for the night. I've got three pretty cool looking spots that I want to try and scope out. So I'm going to head back to the crib and then we'll slowly make our way up there. Wicked mate. A waterfall on a beach. And I'll put the name on the screen because off the top of my head, I can't remember it. But there it is. So, you know, every now and again the sun pops out from beyond them clouds and shows a bit of sunshine and it feels so damn good. Such a transition from this morning. Anyway, more importantly for now, I think I'm going to head up into the hills and check these spots out. And what I can gather, there's three overnighting spots up there. They're all at sort of poignant places along the map, like the Beacon Hill and the Black Hill and something or other else. I'm not entirely sure if they're going to have a phone signal, but I am pretty sure they've got signs saying no overnight parking. But I might just risk it. It's going to be up in the hills in the middle of nowhere. I guess we'll gauge it when we get there. The worst case scenario, we'll come back down the road to one of these spots on the A39. But... Let's go find out. Let's go scoping and see what's up there. Oh, hang on a minute. Where the freaking A is he? Dude, I've got a stowaway. There's a bloody fly in the car. I don't know where he's come from. I don't know if I picked him up in Leicester and he's travelled all the way down with me or whether I picked him up this morning or something. It's random as both. I mean, I don't know. It's annoying, man, because he keeps coming in my vision when I'm driving and such. But I guess in some countries it's like deceived as good luck, but it don't feel like good luck. I need to find him. I need to get him out of the car. I can't go anywhere until I find him. I don't know where he is. You think I'm mad because I can't show you now, don't you? He's here somewhere. I'm telling you, man. I don't know where he's hiding. Hopefully out of the bloody car. Anyway, let's go. Nightmare. Here we go then. Just come off the A road and onto the Bumble Fluff Road. Actually heading in to the Quantock Hills now. How legendary is this? I'll tell you what else as well. I'm loving this area. Everywhere I've been today has been like a 10 or 15 minute drive. Everything's close by. It's such a refreshing change to what I normally do. An hour, two hours from spot to spot. Brilliant. Definitely come back here again. There must be other stuff around here that we're not going to see on this little trip. Oh, here we go then. The Quantock Hills. Area of outstanding natural beauty. Heading up towards Quokum. Or Quokumbe. I don't know how you pronounce it. Yeah, believe it or not, I'm not actually that stupid. Yeah, Quokum. And hopefully the start of our expedition in terms of scoping. Three spots, and they all look great. I 
this cross. Another great looking village though. I mean, look, you know it's already well there. It's got a telephone box and they've still got it. They've not got rid of it. And it never got upgraded if you're not from the UK. They were like the old ones and then BT, British Telecom, who owned all the telephone boxes, they went round and upgraded them to like this spacey, fancy technology type looking thing that was just covered in glass all over the sides of it, which they used to, just go, used to go around and smash to pieces. The old ones were better and now we don't have any. Times are changing, eh? Ooh, times are changing like the wind. I don't know, it's Bob Dylan, wasn't it? Fighting the oppression in the 60s. Still doing it now. In the 2020s, you do. Man, oh, this road looks bad. No more days. Help! Second gear. Fingers crossed. This is a spot, isn't it? You get away with that for the night. It's not the official spot, but oh my days. Look where my temperature gauge is. It's smack bang on off. I'm really worried that that's gonna flip over and heat up. <sighs> if you're not a regular to the series, I had a pipe burst a few weeks ago and I limped home for 200 miles and now I'm in the middle of the Quantock Hills. I don't like this. I'm just gonna let it go five minutes and cool down. I think it was just coming up that hill that's done it. Not good. Oh mate, this is it. Look at it, this is perfect. Oh, brilliant. And I do see a sign, I think. Uh-oh, not good. Would be the perfect spot for overnighting. Let's pull up. Oh my days, really? No overnighting? Come on, all right then. Who's up here? No one. It does make me wonder as well. Can you bosh over the top? Let's have a peruse. Meh, there is a spot. I'm not sure you'd want to drive your car up. It's not the best, but a uh, little house thing over the way. I don't know. I'm not too fussed about this spot. Not a bad little one. Obviously, you can't park here. But this wasn't my chosen spot. The third one is. I think it's going to be the same. I think it's going to have a sign. But, uh, yeah, let's check out the next one. And then work our way over to that. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I'm sorry to bother you. Are you local? Yes. Could I ask you about the no overnighting signs, you know? About the what, sorry? The, the no overnight parking. Oh, well, as far as I know, you can't park here overnight, but yeah. I, I've never done it, so... No, sure. Um, I mean, do you have rangers going around and such, uh, or...? There are rangers, and I don't know if they patrol in the evening or not. Ask me to move on. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sorry, I just don't know. Yeah. Well, bit of clandestine camera work, talking to a local, trying to get the lowdown in the area. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like there's rangers. Whether they're prevalent now, she seemed to think they were prevalent around Corona. I don't know how much I'll leave in on that video, but I guess worst case scenario, they come up and they ask you to move on. We're back down the A39. I guess we'll keep moving and we'll scoop it as we go. Well, spot number two then. And if the colorful scenery is anything to go by, it could be good. Unfortunately, I'm seeing a wooden post with exactly the same sign on it. What a bum chin. Let's get closer, let's have a look. Yep, got the same sign. I'm getting a feeling you get away with it though. I'll tell you what's madness. I'm not gonna get out here, but let me show you something because we at exit the uh, the area. Here, check this out. Look. All this in front of us now, all the way along here, but it's all a lay-by. Not passing or anything that's a proper lay-by you could pull up there all night long and there's no signs yet all back there at what's called witherman's pool or something yeah you can't stay up there overnight that's madness isn't it i'm almost tempted to park there for the night but the views from up top were better hopefully our third spot's the spot well apparently ah this is us looks the most popular of the three spots we've been to and wild, wild horses. None too shabby. There is, however, yet another overnight parking sign. This sucks. Well, decision made. I'm gonna go for a hike. Yeah, I don't know about the overnight parking, but there's a spot up here that I wanted to check out. Or there's a couple, but I don't think I'm gonna get to the second one. It's called Black Hill, and I'm hoping it's gonna have some tidy little views up here. It's getting a bit blowy though and the clouds are uh, gathering quite quickly so I don't want to mess about let's get up here and check out these views I'll tell you what there's wild sheep all over the trails around here 
they've all got big bloody horns I could have stayed at that one and that one and that one and that one they've all got horns I mean you'd hope they've got the temperament of a sheep but they've got the face of a beast I mean a, a goat like a ram you know it's a bit disconcerting oh wow this is nice the Quantock Hills wicked mate boom put a right smile on my face straight away beautiful colours as well it's in bloom midsummer you know nice eh? all the heather and that pretty sure you can make some ice cream out of the yellow ones and maybe something out of the pink stuff maybe not I'm not about to try it steep bit bear with well I tell you what it's dubious with the overnighting up here on the moors but the area is still giving boom time Trig point, second of the trip. If it counts, I'm still on the same trip, even though I went back Leicester and back. But hey, it's got a smile on it and it's having a slap and tickle. Dilly bop, wicked mate. This is Black Hill and it's pretty darn tasty. Not bad at all. Wow, what a spot. Even on a day like today, there's good views, eh? Pretty tidy, man. I think we should push on to this Hurley Beacon. I'm feeling it. I reckon it's gonna be about 10, 15 minute walk there. And I'm guessing it's either over there or over there. I'm not entirely sure. It's over there, we're getting that cut down. Be worth it. Let's keep moving. Well, I was right. It didn't only take about 10, 15 minutes to get here. Unfortunately, I was expecting some big monument thing or something. It looks like it's actually been battered down. But well, this is the Hurley Beacon. And wow, yep, I was right. It's got some mad looking views. Wicked, mate. Stoked to be here, man. Quantock Hills. Wow. Well, back in the crib then, and, oh mate, I'm in a new spot. Wait till we get a load of this. This is our cook. Oh dear. Oh, not in the puddle. Boom. Look at this. A little lakeside spot down on the east side of the Quantock Hills. It is on part for night, and it does have weird reviews. Apparently, there's a lot of boy racers around here, and someone reckoned a bit of dogging but i think it's more boy racers i guess we'll find out as the night goes but what a stunning area and i figured i'd come down and check it out and my idea was if there was somebody else parking here for the night then i'd stay here guy down the way is staying for the night he says so we'll give it a go and if he toddles off and he gets a bit rowdy then we'll toddle off as well for now I'm gonna get the crib sorted out in the back and get a feed on. I've got a wicked one for tonight. Wait till you see this. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited about this one. For once, I've got high hopes that we can actually cook a decent meal in the crib. Reason being, not only have we got good hearty ingredients, but because we've got HelloFresh, I also know that there's probably nothing missing and I've got all of it. So admittedly, my cooking is like a two-sided coin. Even though we've got all the ingredients and the fresh, there's still the chance that I could burn it and it could be a disaster. But hey-ho, it starts well. Because, yeah, it's a HelloFresh and it, I assume a lot of people have heard of HelloFresh, but if you haven't heard of HelloFresh, essentially what it is, is an online food delivery service where you can choose the meals that you want on a weekly basis and the fresh produce, i.e. this, is sent to your door with one of these sort of cooking cards so you can cook your own meal with fresh produce. It is absolutely fantastic, I kid you not. We've been having it for about two months now and we've been having three meals a week for four people. And the choice, you get 37 meals each week to choose from, which 
It may or may not sound quite a lot, but I can guarantee you over two months of having it every week, we haven't once, not once, had a single meal that is similar or the same as the week before. We've always had different meals. We've had fantastic stuff. Lambs, ducks, venison, great meals, fresh produce, great salads. It's just so flavoursome. And I really do, realistically, honestly, I think it's very, very comparable in terms of cost as well for anywhere else that you do the shopping. But the beauty of it is, instead of the normally weak shop that you do, where you pick up the pizzas and the burgers and the normal crap that you always pick up, you can sit down for a half an hour or an hour and go through all the meals and menus on HelloFresh and there's always something that takes your fancy. And it always seems to be something different. And even if you do want the burgers and such, they're there. But they put this such a nice little flavour on it. I mean, you may have seen the last one we did where we had truffle fries with some absolute spanky doodle burger. It really is great. And at the minute, there's a great offer on where you can get 60% off your first box and 25% off each box for the next two months thereafter. It really is a good deal. I'll leave a link in the description where you can go and check it out or you can click this QR code now and that'll send you straight to the offer. What I do, if you're gonna go and look at it, is go and check out the menu first. Go see what's on offer, see what takes your fancy. And from there, you're gonna have a good idea of maybe how many meals per week you want. As I say, the choice is great. Not only do they do vegetarian, but they also do rapid meals that can be ready in 20 minutes, family favourites and premiums. There's a real big varied range of stuff that you can choose. Saying all that, I've actually hopefully <laughs> chosen something tonight that is going to be possible to cook in the crib. It's a beef and beanie quesadilla. 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 I don't know how you say it. It's tomato and tomato, but... That's what we're doing. Oh, and because it's HelloFresh, it comes with cooking instructions on one of these cooking cards. It's legendary. And because it's HelloFresh, it's not written in broken English. I can actually understand it. I mean, admittedly, I'm going to have to get my bar focals on because it is a little bit small. But apart from that, we should be all right. And it starts oh, with a little bit of prepping. Oh, we do like a bit of prepping. All right, where's my knife? Okay, I read through all the instructions for this. Uh, I may have missed the first line. Apparently I've got to preheat my oven to gas mark seven. We'll deal with it. The ridge will work it. It'll work. I, I've, I'm high hopes. Uh, bloody hell, man. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, somewhere in here, there's a bell tomato, or rather, pepper, and, oh yeah, a tomato. Haha, <laughs> with my name all over it. Legend. Oh, we love a bit of prepping. And, hey, I brought the magic knife. Game on. Honestly, God, I love that knife. It even put a little green thing underneath to uh, stop the Tommy just dripping everywhere. Look at the state of it, man. I don't do salad very often. Hello, Fresh has got me eating salads. Oh, I'll be turning into a rabbit soon. Anyway, apparently, those peppers go in that bowl, and these Tommies go in that bowl with a sneaky little drizzle of olive oil, a little smash of pepper, and some Himalayan mountain salt. Ah, oh, maybe a bit much on the salt. Right, apparently we're into the burning stage. Now the easy bit's done. Bringing out the big guns, no messing. Let's dance. Bloody hell, prep bowls everywhere. I feel like a proper chef de Provence. I mean, Jamie, mate. You should be afraid. You should be very afraid. You know, the next thing I'll be doing after cooking this is destroying school meals or something. You know, I I'm just saying, I'm throwing it out there, but no, seriously. But yeah, Channel 4, mate. We ours. Car camping cooking. It's coming at you, Jamie. Ten years time. No one will remember your name. In the meantime, oh, let's jizzy that up with a bit of oil. Oh, you might need to pick some more of that up. In with the meat, you do. And in with the peppers, apparently, at the same time. Game on. Oh, living the dream. Right, while well, that's burning, frying, not burning. You don't need to see the disaster. Uh, here's one I made earlier type thing. No. We shall prep this. Look, mashed kidney beans, and apparently I've got to smash a bit of garlic in there as well. So, yeah, let's do that. Can't be a bit of smash garlic. Everybody loves a good smashing. I don't know. Tell you what, though, right? I'm missing a trick in here, you know. I should have all these little gubbins, tools and such, and spice racks and things. You know, like your garlic thing, your garlic crusher. Just shove it in and that, and keep them 
in there. Oh, mate. I might have to treat myself and pick a few up along the route. Damn it, this knife is not going to be big enough for crushing. Goose fingers. That'll work. Yeah, that kind of works. Oh! Better dog air. Nobody saw that. Freaking A. Oh. oh, keep it moving. Oh, my days. <laughs> you don't want to see this. Ooh. Anyway. Oh, bloody oil on me bed. Not now. Anyway, that's going in there. Hmm. Whoa, raw garlic. It's got a flavour to it. And then apparently, it's all boshing in there. Game on. Oh, it stinks. Gorda garlic. God tell ya. Yeah. Lucky a lot. Oh, wait. There's supposed to be sauces and shiznit going in that as well. Hang on a minute. Right. There's a bit of beef stock going in there. So apparently, oh my days. I've got to add water to a frying pan. Yeah, you know. Um, not gonna lie. Might have actually missed a trick here. This is where all the Mexican flavouring goes in. And a bit of a flump of tomato puree as well. Now it looks better. Right, let's simmer it up and boil it down and yeah, we got the flavours. I didn't forget anything. Damn, that was close. Right, that's looking pretty dried out. And I mean, in a good sense, like how it should be. Might be an idea to turn it off. But yeah, I think we're moving into the end game. Or rather, the end game. Well, I'll just say this. I really do admire HelloFresh's optimism. Let me show you and explain. First step. Take one tortilla wrap thing. Check. Laid in with the gubbins on one side. Spread with said grated cheese. Rawr, never get enough cheese, don't you know? I've got to fold it. I'm sort of squidge it together, I think. Bit of oil on top, apparently. And now, here's where the optimism comes in, because apparently, I've oh, got to leave that in there for 12 minutes, mate. They don't cook very often with a Ridge Monkey on the Hello Fresh cooking show, do they? No, because if I leave that in there for 12 minutes, it will just be a black piece of dust on the bloody pan. I think we've got about 60 to 90 seconds, and she should be good. Oh, oh. Right, let's get this little puppy dog served up with a little bit of salad, don't you know? Look how oh, healthy I'm eating. The kids keep telling me I don't like salad, apparently. But quite a few of these HelloFresh meals have had salads with them, and I have quite enjoyed them. Anyway, hopefully this is not burnt. He said it, it should be sort of crispy brown, and yeah, man. I'm, I'm calling that good. Yeah, I mean, there's two of them. There's a, there's another one to do, don't get me wrong. But for now, I've just done that one. Oh, whoa. Yeah, that side looked great. That side was, uh, yeah, he was lucky. Verdict. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, it's a fancy wrap. We've done wraps before, but yeah, we, we've not done a fancy wrap that tastes like this, honestly. Honestly, that's probably one of the best tasting wraps I've done. Okay, quesadilla, whatever it is. It really is good. You know, like the boxes ones that we normally get. Now, that's really nice. Those sometimes they're like too overly flavoury with the barbecue and such, but no, I'm happy days with that. Gotta be honest as well, pretty sight. Hello, fresh, no less. My one shot, I'm making it in the big time. I have a channel four, and channel five's gonna be calling me any day now, but yeah, go check it out. It's pretty cool. They got a good offer on, it's great quality food, and yeah, good meals on the table every night. As for now, I'm going to munch up and I'll catch you in a bit. Morning. Well, what can I say? What an absolutely amazing spot. A great find, and I'm really psyched that I kept moving around last night looking for overnighting spots. <sighs> it would have been so easy just to go back down to that spot at the A39, but this was a real nice find. No phone signal, but completely peaceful and quiet. Not a single car went by after nine o'clock at night, and it's all you could hear around here was pure nature. Literally sat here for about an hour just listening to the nature. It's fantastic. There's a weird thing going on around here though with the old park for night. There's a few locals that obviously don't like people overnighting here and they've been going on the app leaving comments and such like 
fear tactic type comments and then there's comments about the spots up in the Quantock Hills out. Please don't park up there. Please don't make it be a motorhome stopover point. I get it if you're local, but it's also, as an overnighter, a little bit annoying. Those spots up in the Quantock Hills, there's no problem with staying up there. There's nobody up there. It's in the middle of the moors. But as we found out all over the UK, these corona signs or signs went up during corona and they haven't been taken down since. I've been told that by all the locals up in Northumberland and down here as well. But it is what it is. We ended up finding a pucker little spot. As for now, I think this is going to be a good point to end this one. I'm heading west from here on in. Who knows to where and who knows when. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, all the good stuff, hit the like button, subscribe to keep up with the series, and definitely hit me in the comments. And as always, you do, you do. Take it easy. Enjoy the camp and stay stealthy. All right.